Hi, and welcome to Frosher Talks. My name is Manfred, and today we are going to explore the features and merits of the Frosch Advanced Excel Counting System, also referred to as FADC. In this episode, we are going to concentrate on the working principle of the SIL4 FADC Excel Counting System. Each track section is marked with one detection point TP on every end. Each FADC detection point always comprises of one wheel sensor at track side. Furthermore, the wheel sensor is connected to the indoor components via a signaling cable, starting with the overvoltage protection board BSI, followed by an evaluation board AEB. All AEB boards are able to communicate with each other via an internal communication bus in order to exchange the necessary information from wheel detection and axle counting. Furthermore, at least one communication board COM per internal bus is required, which has the capability to also communicate with all other bus participants. In order to explain the actual counting functionality of the FADC, let's concentrate on track section TS1. An approaching train from the left will first be detected by detection point 1, DP1. The evaluation board AB of DP1 detects every axle through the evaluation and digitization of the signal originating from the wheel sensor. For details on the wheel detection and digitization functionality, please tune into the Frauscher Talks wheel detection season. As the train continues to detection point 2, all wheels passing DP1 will be detected. As soon as the train has reached detection point 2, the same detection procedure is conducted again. Well, careful listeners may have recognized that no axle counting has yet taken place. So far, the wheels only got detected. For the axle counting function to be initiated, we first need to define an AB responsible for the evaluation of a track section. As all AABs communicate with each other, we can freely choose any of the communicating AEBs for such purposes. From an availability point of view, for track section 1, the most suitable AEBs are the AEBs from DP1 or DP2. So in this example, we now just define the AEB of DP2 for the axle counting for TS1. Now let's rewind to the scenario when the approaching train from the left hits DP1 first. In that case, AB1 communicates the digitized wheel traversing information to AB2 for the axle counting. With the information from AB1, AB2 starts to count the axles in based on the included information about the traversing direction. At the same time, AB2 immediately changes the track section status of TS1 to occupied. As soon as the train has reached detection point 2, AB2 starts to count axles out of TS1 based on its own wheel detection information. After the same amount of axles are counted out as in, the track section status of TS1 will switch to clear again. The same procedure applies to all other track sections, for example for TS2, we could also choose AB2 for the axle counting. This would mean that AB2 is counting out axles in TS1 and counting them in in TS2 at the same time when the train is traversing detection point 2. But again, due to the open communication architecture of the FADC, it is possible to define any AB for the evaluation of any track section. This principle can be easily applied, track section by track section, to fully cover the entire railway network. In conclusion, the flexible architecture of the FADC opens a wide range of opportunities, features and interface possibilities, which will be covered in the upcoming episodes. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. See you in the next episodes of Russia Talks.